I'd like to remind everyone that masks are required within the building. Oh, All this order meeting to order. Um, first item. Alderman Bass. Here. Alderman Cleaver. Here. Alderman Headley. Here. Alderman Knox. Here. Alderman Stratton. Here. Alderman Totten. Here. There's a quorum. Thank you. Next item, Pledge of Allegiance, led by Alderman Cleaver. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation. nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item, approval of agenda. No changes, Mayor. Next item, proclamation. From the city of Grain Valley, Missouri, whereas Andrew Ganassi, is de distinguished himself of obtaining the rank of Eagle Scout and Boy Scout Troop 692. And whereas Andrew has been recognized in this area for his outstanding community service, leadership skills, um, positive attitude, academic achievements, and whereas, I now understand I'm getting the echo. Back. Whereas Andrew has proven to be an asset to this Grain Valley community, his troop, his family, and his friends, and whereas Andrew has set an example for others to follow and designated himself, his troop, his community with this award, and whereas the city of Grain Valley would also like to recognize Andrew for his outstanding achievement of becoming an Eagle Scout. Now, therefore, it's proclaimed that the City of Grain Valley Board of Aldermen and Mayor Chuck Johnston are proud to recognize Andrew Ganassi for achieving Scout's highest honor bestowed, the rank of Eagle Scout. And I want, for those that don't know, only 5% of the people that go into scouting, boys and girls, obtain the rank of Eagle Scout, so it's, it's not something to be taken lightly. Andrew, if you'd like to step up front, please. see him smiling if the mask's on. Congratulations.
Next item, citizens participation. Um, anyone would like to speak to us? Um, we request to step to the front. Please give your name and address and limit your um, comments to two minutes. Justin Tyson, 439 Oakwood Lane. Uh, first, I want to thank the board for clearing the way for Food Truck Fridays. Uh, we had our kick off, kick off night this last week, and it was a huge one. So thank you for that. Uh, at the last meeting, there was a monetary discrepancy brought up uh, concerning the general liability coverage uh, that is provided by the Grain Belly Partnership. Uh, since <clears throat> we are partially funded by city dollars, um, a $7,000 discrepancy was brought up on public record. I want to clear it up on public record. Uh, the correct amount provided by Mr. Brad Burdett, owner of ASI Insurance, is $1,026. Uh, the amount Mrs. Lindsay mentioned during the last meeting was the correct amount for the insurance policy. Uh, if you'd like a copy of that policy, I've got copies here if you'd like that for your records. I would. Would you like one? Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Okay. That's it. Want to clear that up? Thank to, you. Thank you. To clarify that, to comment on it, I apologize for that. Um, it was through a voice recording error that um, several people, and it clearly said the amount I stated. So sure. it was my mistake in, in trusting a voice message. No, I understand. <laughs> now we're clear. Thanks, sir. Any other comments? Seeing none, next order business, consent agenda. Mayor, I move we accept the consent agenda. I have a motion to accept the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Totten. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion carries 6 0. Next item, previous business, seeing none. Next item, new business, fireworks permit. Um, first, Green Valley um, Band Association, Gerald Sp or Spooner. You like um, any comments you'd like to make? Or okay. Next item, uh, next uh, Green Valley Partnership, Tosh Lindsay. Okay. Any comments you'd like to make? Okay. We do have everything we need for the um, Green Valley Band Parents Association, um, and we would request a motion to approve that. Um, that license for the fireworks. We do need one more um, minutes for the Grain Valley Partnership, which she has said she will get to me once she had her last meeting. So after that, I would be ready to um, do the fireworks permit for that one. So we also need a motion to approve that one as well. Ron, will we approve uh, both, both requests? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second for Alderman Stratton. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. <laughs> Seeing none, motion carries 6 0. Um, next item, presentation. Seeing none. Um, next item, public hearing, capital pavement, and construction material conditions use permit. Yep, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Trozen for the staff presentation. Public hearing before you tonight is capital paving and construction materials. They're requesting a conditional use permit to operate a portable asphalt plant on approximately 14.3 acres that is generally located at the northeast corner of McQuarrie and Seymour Road. I put the aerial photo up here to you and you will be familiar. I-70, McQuarrie Road. The property owner is A4 Holdings 
LLC, A4 Holdings LLC, has given permission to Capital uh, Paving to operate an asphalt plant on their property. Uh, the purpose to us to allow the operation of a portable asphalt uh, plant that will be used to resurface designated state highways. Capital paving has been selected by Missouri Department of Transportation to pave several highway projects during 2021. Capital paving will haul by truck aggregate to the site to produce hot asphalt. Uh, mix that will then be hauled to the roads that are being paved. Um, Capital Paving will start operating the plant somewhere around May of 2021. They'll conclude the paving around November 2021. When Capital Paving has completed the MoDOT projects, they will remove the plant from the site. The asphalt plant will use around 30 dump trucks. According to Capital Paving, the trucks will be turning at a rate of 125 uh, turns every 24 hours. What that means is 125 trucks will be coming to the site and 125 trucks will be leaving the site in a 24 hour time period. McQuarrie Road currently sees truck traffic, but definitely not at this volume. Uh, even though the asphalt plant will only be open seven months, this will be the equivalent of about three years worth of truck traffic on this road. The proposed land use is found under the city's uh, zoning ordinance under the conditional use section, uh, which allows for an asphalt plant as a conditional use permit. The 14.3 acres, which I've highlighted, is comprised of two tracts. Tract 1, the one closest to Seymour and Macquarie Road, is zoned District M1 Light Industrial and is about 2.8 acres in size. Tract uh, is platted as Lot 1, Snybar Industrial Park. As you can see, there are some buildings on that tract. There are three buildings. One of the buildings is the Office for Summit Trucking and Legacy Iron, LLC. Legacy Iron specializes in buying, selling, or trading heavy and construction equipment, trucks, trailers, and agricultural equipment. Track two is Zone District A Agricultural and is approximately 11.5 acres in size. This property has not been platted and there's only one building on this track. The Board of Aldermen adopted Ordinance 2490 on December 9th, 2019, approving a conditional use permit for a concrete crushing and recycling facility that operates on this property. This, this concrete a recycling facility doesn't operate all the time. The crusher is brought in periodically, crushes concrete, and then leaves, goes to another site, then comes back and crushes as, as needed. Uh, regarding surrounding land uses, the property to the north and east are undeveloped. Interstate 70 is south of this property. To the west, the property is zone district M1 and is owned by Cities Service Gas Company. To the north and west of the property is the Creekside Residential Plan Unit Development. Public notice was given in the examiner and by letter to the property notice of record within 185 feet of the applicant's property. On March 10th, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing. There was much discussing, discussion regarding this public hearing. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted five in favor and two against to recommend approval to the Board of Aldermen subject to the following conditions. One, the conditional use permit will expire one year from the date of the Board of Aldermen ordinance. Two, the operation of the asphalt plant shall only occur during the week, Monday through Friday, and that the overnight operation be limited to 60 calendar days from when it starts. During the testimony given by Capital Paving, they, they will also be doing paving of I-70. As you, you know, most interstate paving usually occurs during the nighttime operation. Mm -hmm. So the Planning and Zoning Commission wanted to limit the amount that the asphalt plant would be in operation during that nighttime operation 
to 60 days. Number three, the ingress and egress access for trucks and delivering aggregate for asphalt plant or hauling for hot asphalt from site shall be from the drive east of McQuarrie Road. Seymour Road should not be used. The transfer, transportation routes shall use McQuarrie Road, Buckner Tarsney Road to I-70 and should not use Buckner Tarsney north of McQuarrie Road. Four, the location of the asphalt plant and stockpile areas shall be in accordance with the site plan filed with the application. This is the site plan that was filed with the application and therefore would be a part of the conditional use permit. Prior to the asphalt of the plant, condition five, the applicant with staff present, which will video and assess the, the current condition of McQuarrie Road. Condition six, after the asphalt plant closes, the applicant shall repair all damage to McQuarrie Road identified by staff, or if damage is too substantial, mill and four inch concrete overlay from where concrete road ends on McQuarrie to Seymour Road, excuse me, asphalt concrete overlay. Seven, prior to operating the asphalt plant, the applicant will provide the city with a two-year maintenance bond written by a bonding company in the amount of $100,000 for Macquarie Road. The purpose of that condition is to get a maintenance bond up front of the operation of the asphalt plant so that we have something on record as far as that we have some type of insurance policy uh, that if the asphalt plant does start to begin operations, and we get to the end of it, and we uh, do not get the assurance of condition six, then the city has the insurance of condition seven to uh, cash in on the maintenance bond for the repair of Macquarie Road. The estimate of the $100,000 was calculated by our city engineer, Dick Tuttle. Condition number eight, Jake brakes are prohibited on the dump trucks used in the operation of the portable asphalt plant. Condition nine, the Board of Aldermen should consider a reasonable fee for the use of the land for a portable asphalt plant. This was a condition that was uh, put forward by the Planning and Zoning Commission. However, this is not a condition that is put forth as part of the ordinance that's before you. The purpose of that was that after doing some research by staff, this was a condition that could not reasonably be put forward to the Board of Aldermen because there was not a condition of as far as a reasonable fee after a discussion with our city attorney, Joe Lawfer, in regards to a condition that we could um, put a condition on the applicant to uh, put a fee on and impose upon the applicant. Uh, that concludes uh, the uh, staff report. Um, I believe that the applicant <coughs> was to be present tonight. His name is Brandon <coughs> uh, Capital Materials. Um, if uh, are there any questions for staff? On this, on this viewing of the road, um, we had the whole city reviewed by that commission that come out to actually. Um, X-ray the roads, I guess, or what a sonic, whatever they did to it. Um, are we going to do that type of testing on it prior and after? Because um, just a visual look is not going to tell us hidden damages. Um, so that's the purpose of the two-year bond. So that the surface um, would, if they were to do any kind of repair to Macquarie Road, if they do repair Macquarie Road, there were any type of subsurface damage that would have occurred because of the asphalt trucks, that subsurface damage will occur within that two-year period. So we'll see that subsurface damage occur after that. But couldn't we, um, but what do we have saying that it didn't have subsurface damage before they started? And, um, how are we going to be able to prove that, yeah, you did this and it wasn't like this before you started if we just do a visual look of the exterior of it now. You mean that if 
far as the visual and the video, as well as the study. Is the video we going to actually test the subsurface? Uh, it would, I guess it would be the professional opinion of our staff um, as far as the, uh, of the condition of the road. Can we take pictures? Well, that still doesn't show you the subsurface. We have the, we have the assessment that was done, which is less than um, you know, two years old. Okay. I just want to make sure we can prove that when we come to this, that it was their trucks that did the damage and it wasn't their pre-existing. Okay. When would, when would the repave be done on McCory after these trucks tear it all to pieces? They're in the business of uh, asphalting roads. We assume that if it did require it to be a uh, mill and overlay, that they would probably, that would occur while the asphalt plan is still there. Exactly, but you're looking at finishing up their run in November. So meantime, once the trucks put the heaves in the road and push the pavement and cause the potholes, our citizens are gonna have to drive down that road because they're going to be coming in there with dump trucks loaded with gravel at about 150,000 pounds and leaving with dump trucks with grossing around 85,000. So it'll tear that road up really quick. So our, so what I'm asking then, the road's going to be tore up for the buses and the, and the people that live in the housing addition all summer long, and they're going to have to put up with that. Yep. <clears throat> and Mr. Mr. Trezor, with the uh, with all things considered, uh, with this, what was the the staff recommendation for the board on that? Uh, staff would not recommend approval. What uh, what benefit is there to the city of, of having this? I mean, yeah, and Mr. Mayor, I uh, wanted to keep my I think believe the applicant is here. Um, Mr. Trozen is uh, just submitting the kind of the the facts of the case uh, okay. for the board. I didn't know if that had been okay. So it's, it's hard for me to determine what the benefit is. All I can tell you is that under the city zoning ordinance, by conditional use permit, an asphalt plan is allowed and is granted as a by conditional use permit. Thank you. It's a decision to determine if by conditional use permit, if this is the right location for this type of use. Additional questions? What kind of uh, conversations were had about the smell? If there's gonna be trucks literally running 24 hours a day, that means the plant's running 24 hours a day. And I'm sure that, you know, especially in the summertime, there's gonna be a lot of smell moving through there by the school, by the residences over there. Was there, was there any conversation about that? Conversation meaning? Just concerning the smell of the plant in operation. During the plant commission meeting? No, no, no. Yes, during the planning commission meeting. I believe there was testimony given during the planning commission meeting that the applicant even testified to that there is odor and the odor is uh, he's present. So I'm not going to speak for him, but the, there was discussion that the asphalt plant does have odor. Well, I'm just asking the question. I, I was there at the meeting. I just want to Bring it up. You were at the meeting. Okay, I believe that's all, Mr. Trails. Um, anyone would that anyone like to speak to the? Sure. I, I mean, I'd like to. Okay. Hear about the step forward, please. Okay, any questions? Who had? I guess we'll start with my question. Uh, just can you talk about what kind of issues you've experienced in past places you've had an asphalt plant? Um, were those asphalt plants close to residences and schools? Um, 
major business areas, that sort of thing. And and can you also state your name as well? Yeah, so my name is Brandon Reed. I'm the Lean Capital Payment and Investment Lean Capital Manager. And I do appreciate you guys signing my uh, hand to make this matter. Um, so regarding smell, uh, yeah, there, there are people who have mentioned the smell. We routinely operate asphalt plants fairly close to residents, uh, homes, not all the time. They are affordable, but there are situations where they have been less than 100 feet from houses. And we've had people voice their concern about the smell at those times. We've also been uh, farther away or closer, and they haven't said anything. We've been farther away, and they've said something. So it's, uh, I say it's probably be personal opinion how bad it bothers people. It's not a, there's not a subjective test you can do to properly identify how bad it bothers people. Additional questions? I have one, one more. Um, concerning the fact, you know, do the math here, it's uh, 210 days times roughly 250 trucks in total in and out every day. I mean, it's 10.4 trucks in an hour. Um, I, I have concerns considering you're going to be running right by, you know, the residences and what kind of impact that's going to have on traffic at the intersections up there and so on. Uh, I know there's nothing you can do to mitigate that. The math is what it is, but uh, I'm just voicing my concern relative to that. One, because that's in, in my ward and I, I will be the one who gets the calls. And I don't know that I would have a good answer if I if I approved it and you know have to deal with all the the issues that people are going to bring up because once you start, I don't believe it can be stopped. Your your plant's going to be in operation. Yeah, it is a difficult process to stop. Um, so that number that we gave, I mean, uh, I feel we should feel that is probably max production. Seven sometimes, but it's not always going to be run that fast. So, I mean, there will be noticeable truck traffic no matter what. But um, will it be if you just do the pure math of 10 trucks an hour times 250 days times 24 hours a day? I would say that would be inaccurate. For the, when the plant is running night, the majority of that time will just be at night. plant is there for project specific purposes uh, only our project so it's not necessarily as much of a, a grocery store plant of people coming in okay i just have a real concern with the road it's going to destroy <laughs> that road fast and then the people that live there have to deal with it Agreed. um is there a noise element to this too other than the, the truck traffic But I mean, you're, if this could be running at night, you're pretty close to a residential area there. Um, you know, is it is it enough noise that it's going to disturb the residents that close? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. How many feet is it from the residents? Um, my guessment from knowing that neighborhood over there, I'd say it's probably within 200 yards. Uh, they would probably hear it. I don't think it would be much louder than I-70. Mm -hmm. uh, semis rolling down I-70, so it would be probably a comparable noise volume to what I'm hearing over here. Okay. What do you, do you see in, as a, what is the benefit to grain value you see in this? Uh, the benefit to grain valley, I would say, is... <laughs> Me 
pick plant sites based on you know the cost you can pay to place and set up an asphalt plant for the mm -hmm. Missouri Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. which is a federally and state funded organization. And we bid with certain assumptions that to offer the cheapest price to MoDOT because that's what they value. So a direct benefit to Grain Valley, I don't know that I could say there's just a super direct benefit, but overall, hopefully we're providing the most cost-effective roads to the citizens of Grain Valley for the Missouri Department of Transportation. If you don't mind me asking, the asphalt that you're gonna be processing there, what project, what projects are those from? Where are they located at? So this one is I-70, goes from the Oak Grove exit to Blue Springs exit through Sunny Concrete, uh, Highway, to 24, which runs from Lexington uh, west to Kansas City. There's a bridge project up on 24 outside of Buckner and some various routes uh, south of here, about 20 miles. Additional questions? Thanks, Mr. E. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, this is a public um, discussion, so any comments from uh, the audience? Yes. Would you step up to the microphone, please? <laughs> and your name, please, Cindy. Uh, it seems to me if those projects are that far away, Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll close public discussion. Um, next item business resolutions. First resolution R21 28, a res resolution by the Board of Aldermen in the City of Green Valley, named uh, James Hofstadt Settler as uh, Green Valley Planning and Zoning Commission to fulfill the expired term of member Paul Loving. Do I have a motion? So moved. So I'm, I move that we accept the resolution. Uh, what did I just do? Ten to one. Uh, resolution number R2128, which will, which is a resolution to, I don't have the number. That's all, that's all you need. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Alderman Knox. Any discussion? Uh, Mayor, members of the board, if this looks familiar, it's because it is basically <laughs> from the last board meeting, but it's. Uh, kind of an administrative uh, cleanup. Um, if you remember at the last one, uh, we had talked about the length of term for uh, James Hofstetter since it was filling an unexpired term. Um, and the resolution uh, mistakenly showed it as a four-year term because it was an unexpired term. Uh, this appointment will be for the remainder of that unexpired term. So it goes to November of 2023. No further discussion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion carries 6 0. Next item, resolution R21 29. This is a resolution by the Board of Aldermen uh, to enter an agreement with Missouri um, Department of Transportation for grant funded overtime. DWI enforcement and hazardous moving violation enforcement. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution number R21 29. I have a motion to approve R21 29. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Knox. Any discussion? Mayor, members of the board, uh, this is exactly as it states in the, uh, the title. This is something that we do on a yearly basis, but 
It basically allows for us to uh, accept grant money for DWI enforcement and hazardous movement violations. Um, so this is something that we utilize on a yearly basis. No further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion carries 6-0. Next item, resolution R21-30. It's a resolution authorizing the city administrator to approve the Midwest um, Power Risk MPR 2021 through 2022 um, planned election and rates for employee health, dental, and uh, vision benefits coverage. Mayor, I move we approve resolution 21-30. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Bass. Um, any discussion? Mayor, members of the board, it's not very often that when we talk about um, insurance renewals, it's actually good news. Um, but in this case, it is. Uh, if you remember this, it's a little tricky because our budget is based on a calendar year, but our plan year as far as benefits is July to June. So when we go through the budget process every fall, we have to uh, make an, what we think is an educated guess on what the second half of the year is going to be. Um, if you go back to those talks, um, we actually budgeted for a 12% increase and the two plans that we offer, um, one had a 2% uh, increase and one had a 2.5% increase. So we're actually on the, the good side of that for once. Um, so we'll take uh, any good news we can get. And that's keeping uh, the same type of plans that we have now for our employees. No further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion carries, 6-0. Next item, ordinances. Um, next item is bill number B20, oops, B21-06 for its second read. This is an ordinance vacating a 50-foot right-of-way for Capel Street between 215 Front Street and 303 Front Street. I move that we accept the second reading of bill number B21-06 and approve it as ordinance number 2542. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second, second. Alderman Knox, any discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Alderman Bass. Yes. Alderman Headley? Yes. Alderman Knox? Yes. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Alderman Totten? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Next item, Bill 21 07. This is an ordinance amending Chapter 600 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Grain Valley, Missouri, pertaining to issuance of liquor licenses near schools and churches. What are the rules now? We need a motion. <laughs> Alderman Totten, we need a motion. Oh, that's right. I'm, which one? Okay. Can I move that we accept the second reading of bill number B2107? Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Alderman Headley, any discussion? What are the rules now? You want to address that? Do you mean what we're, will they be with this or? Uh -huh. current, current, you, you rules. Mean, currently, um, the code was written where if a uh, liquor establishment wanted to go in uh, within a certain distance of a church or school, that that church or school would have to give uh, a letter okaying it, basically giving approval. Uh, there was change in state statute uh, that made that work. That is not the case, that it is still kind of a, a waiver or approval process, but it's done by the Board of Aldermen after notification uh, of nearby property owners. Okay. Further discussion? A question just, just for clarification. So should, should we have the same issue as we had with the quaint gathering and the liquor license that they were requesting? it wouldn't have been stopped where it was. We would have made the decision at that point. 
Right. It kind of would have gone through that same process, but they would have been applying to the board for approval um, to waive that 100-foot uh, limit um, versus the church to do it. Gotcha. And I believe we're required to have a hearing on that before we... Uh, we're required to, uh, yeah, to send out notice to those property owners of... Uh, that will be affected. Yep. Okay. Additional questions? Seeing none. Um, roll call, please. Alderman Bass? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. Alderman Headley? Yes. Alderman Knox? Yes. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Alderman Totten? Yes. Motion carries six zero. Next item, Bill 21-08. This is an ordinance approving a conditional use permit to operate a portable asphalt plant. I move that we accept the first reading of bill number B21-08 and bring it back for its second reading by title only at our next regular session. I have a motion. Do I have a second? No second. Um, dies. Um, next item, Bill B-21-09. Mayor, I move we accept the first oh, reading. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. An ordinance amending the Grain Valley Municipal Code, Chapter 500, Buildings and Building Regulations, Articles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, I think that's 9, 10, and 11, and adopting the 2018 International Swimming Pool and Spa Code. I have a motion, sorry. Um, sorry for jumping the gun. I need a motion. <laughs> Mayor, I move we accept the first reading of Bill B21-09 and bring it back for a second reading by title only. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Alderman Knox, any discussion? Mayor and members of the board, uh, we have our building official, Mike Russell, here, um, who will go over the uh, what the ordinance is doing. Good evening. As, as Ken stated, I am Mike Russell. I'm the building official here. Um, I started looking at uh, our code a little while back. We're following the 2012 code now, uh, which makes it nine years old. And I started looking at all the other communities now. Most of every community to the west of where we live are already following the 2018 code or they're in the process of adopting it. Uh, some of the, the cities that I have here that, that are following the 2018 already is uh, Lee Summit, Independence, Raytown, Grandview, Liberty, Raymore, Kansas City, Missouri, Olathe, and Overland Park. And then uh, Bloom Springs is in the process of, of adopting the 2018 now. We, we started reviewing the 2018 codes um, as well as I spoke to some other communities around just to see how they amended and how it was working for them. Um, and then we started looking at some other amendments to the codes to, to work best for us. Um, I also reached out to the Central Jackson County Fire Protection District and discussed it with them. Uh, they were in favor of the 2018 code and also had a few amendments that they would like to see made to the fire code. Uh, which we've added uh, to our amendments as well to the building code. Um, once we had all the amendments made, um, I sent the codes up um, to the city administrator just to get his approval and his thoughts on it. Um, once he was okay with everything, I sent all the codes that we were looking to adopt and all their amendments uh, to the Construction Board of Appeals, uh, asking for them just to review it, take a look, and give us their thoughts on it. Um, it came back with no, no negative at all. After I heard from them, uh, we did hold a builders meeting uh, in which we had over 20 builders and developers um, come and listen to us discuss the code. Uh, we discussed everything for a while in the amendments, and then we had a, a uh, time for questions. Really wasn't too many questions. There was a few questions, and once again, um, there was no negative responses uh, from the builders. Um, one thing I was originally looking, I was hoping to have this um, take effect by the 1st of May. Uh, I recently found out this evening that we have to have it set uh, 
in the city clerk's office for 90 days before it can be approved. So if if it's approved from at this first reading, we'll have it up in the city clerk's office for 90 days, and then uh, do a second reading after that. Any questions? I'll be happy to try to answer. So is there some on these codes 2018? I mean, what's is this public pools? Is this home pools? Is this it's, it's, what? It's all just it's all the building codes that we follow here. The list that I have is the. Uh, 2018 International Building Code, uh, 2018 International Existing Building Code, the 2018 International Fire Code, 2018 International Residential Code. Um, we I've, we follow now the 2006 International uh, Energy Conservation Code, and we're going to leave that as is. Uh, that was really the only concern for many of the builders was adopting the. The 2018 uh, Energy Conservation Code because it gets really expensive. Um, they're building either two to six walls or putting insulation in the walls and then having to put more insulation on, on the outside of the walls. Uh, so we decided to stay with the 2006 that we follow now. Uh, the National Electric Code um, is just a little bit behind the, the building code, so we're going to adopt the, the 2017 International or the National Electric Code. Uh, 2018 International Property Maintenance Code, 2018 International Mechanical Code, 2018 International Plumbing Code, 2018 International Fuel Gas Code, uh, 2018 International Swimming Pools Fall Code, and then um, a code that the city has already adopted is the 1997 Uniform Code for Abatement of Dangerous Buildings. Um, and we was going to leave that as is as well, because honestly, I couldn't find a newer version of that. And I would say one of the things, in addition to Mike's other duties on a daily basis of uh, reviewing plans and uh, going out and inspecting them, uh, this process is actually pretty labor intensive on his part because you can't do just a, well, you could, but we choose not to do just a flat, these are the codes that we're going with. We actually go through and then see which ones uh, don't work for our community. So I just want to say hats off to, uh, to Mike. He put a lot of work into this and... Uh, I think he went about it the right way with bringing in the builders and, and developers and making sure there's no surprises there. So thank you. Thank you. Work on it. Any other questions? Seeing none. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? I'm um, seeing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion carries 6 0. Next item of business City Attorney's Report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Board and Mayor. Uh, sorry, these are new. You can probably hear me. Uh, Sarah Carnes, obviously, with Walter Municipal Law. Uh, just the only thing I have tonight is that Walter Municipal Law is doing their city officials training in Independence on April 30th. It's a Friday at the NPR building. Um, it starts about 8.30, ends about 2. If you're a member of NPR, which you all are, uh, they usually sponsor the training, certified officials training. So come join us April 30th. Uh, there's breakfast and lunch. There's anything else. And I'll be there. So come visit. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Next item, uh, city administrator and staff report. Um, just adding on to that, if one of you does want to attend that, just let myself or Jamie or both of us know and... Uh, we'll get you all signed up. Um, Mr. Trozen's community development report was with the packet. Um, and Chief Beal. Mayor Board, on April the 24th, uh, from 10 to 2 a.m., we'll be having, participating in the National Drug Take Back event. So if you guys have any expired... Can't hear you, Chief. Can't hear you, Chief. You can take off your mask to speak. We're having a little trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. I say on April the 24th, from 10 to 2 p.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be participating in the National Drug Take Back event. Uh, so if you guys have any expired drugs, you can bring them up. Be on the south side of the police department. Mr. Davies. Thank you. 
we're pretty happy to get that bridge moved. Uh, this is phase two uh, of, uh, of this particular trail project. And so now the, the next task is to connect either end of the bridge with uh, a super wide asphalt trail. Uh, these are budgeted items for this year. And we do plan on doing most of the trail work in house uh, within the Public Works Department, the Parks and Recreation Department, with the clearing and the grubbing. application of rocks and compaction because it'll just save us quite a bit of money by doing it in-house versus, versus contracting out and then we'll have somebody come in that will actually pave uh, the trail. And so the, the south end of the trail or the south end of the bridge will head south will connect to uh, Carmen Meadows Lake uh, there off of Laurel Lane we have an existing easement there and then it'll also connect to a future small trailhead parking lot uh, that we're putting in there at the, the dead end of Cross Creek Drive. To the north of the bridge, it will connect to basically just 40 acre boundary lines uh, so that we can provide that connectivity for, for kids going to and from school and whatever else that uh, or how long they spent in the building. Um, anyway, we plan to get that done this year, hopefully with, within the, the next few months. Uh, it is getting into our busy season uh, for park maintenance, so there's some grass growing and need to start doing some drills here and there. Um, so we're working to get that put together. Also with that will be signage and park benches and trash cans and dog waste stations and things like that. Uh, that whole corridor along Blue Branch Creek has been known for uh, quite a bit of off-road activity with dirt bikes, four-wheelers, yeah. golf carts. And it's been a never-ending battle up and down that corridor. I'm sure you all know our, our, our trails master plan does not allow any motorized vehicles on our trails. Um, and we've got signage up at either at both ends of our trail there this spring. We'll, we'll get signage up for there as well too. Um, but, but that's kind of part of that second piece of phase two is to not only bring the trails in, but also the support and amenities that we have to go along uh, with as well. I have a question to that. Um, how about the handicap that have motorized um, carts and stuff? Are those restricted also? No, it's, it's, if the parents are motorized uh, wheelchairs, those are allowed. Okay, thank you. We, we actually have gates at our trailhead that prevent a vehicle from being able to cross through, but they're just wide enough to where somebody in a wheelchair or something of that nature Yeah, those would be allowed. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was all for staff comments, Mayor. Okay, next item, Board of Aldermen reports and call, uh, comments. Alderman Bass? I have nothing this time, thank you. Alderman Cleaver? Nothing this time. Alderman Headley? Nothing at this time, Mayor. Alderman Knox? Uh, yes, Mayor. I think we all received emails from uh, uh, two of our personnel on the zoning <laughs> And planning commission that are expired in their term and have expressed interest in uh, carrying on with that term I'd like to make a motion that we put that on the agenda for next meeting uh, on the resolutions okay. um, next uh, um, Alderman Stratton I have nothing at this time Alderman Totten nothing at this time next item mayor's report um, I believe you all seen that, um, and most of us knew before that uh, um, Amazon is taking over the Halidex building. There's already a lot of people with concerns about traffic and stuff. I addressed that with um, Mr. Murphy tonight. We are going to try and make contact with Amazon to see um, what we can get them to do because um, I I'm real concerned if they think that they're going to use their you know a lot of this to be delivery trucks. And our street there, um, our demise is not meant for the type of traffic that will be handled there. So we're going to try and get with Amazon to, to head off the situation before it, uh, before it comes up and try and get some answers out to people that they may raise their questions. Uh, that's all I had. Um, there is a need for an executive session. Do I have a motion? Um, it would be for 1, 3, and 13. I have a motion.
have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Bass. Alderman Bass. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Headley. Yes. Alderman Knox. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Alderman Totten. Yes. made a motion during his comment that we put that on resolution um yeah 